name's Tim. And I'm going to talk, talk to you a little bit about hacking, uh, lightweight, top-level hacking the Bitsy game engine. So if you've been around me in the last year, you've probably heard of Bitsy. Um, it's this cool little web-based game engine that lets you make tiny narrative games uh, that end up looking something like this, where you have, oh, uh, i got to restart my game. Uh, where you have a little character that you can move around and you can interact with stuff, talk to things, uh, have exits to other rooms uh, where you can go exploring. And it's really great because it, the game engine itself is very, very tightly constrained. Um, a room is always uh, 16 by 16 tiles. Your sprites, every little tile is an 8 by 8 pixel um, item. And you only have three colors per room that you can deal with. Uh, you don't have any kind of branch here control over like uh, allowing people to exit or like moving things around in a room. Everything is static. Uh, all of your branching and stuff, if you want to do it, happens in dialogue through setting variables or, or having characters say different things. And people make really complex games through a lot of manual labor uh, by doing things like, well, once you go into this room, uh, now the entire world outside is swapped for this other world. Uh, that, so when you exit the room, now you're in, it looks like you're in the same place, but things have moved. And that's because they've built out a second set of the world uh, where things are different, um, just to fit in the constraints of the engine. So constraints are awesome, but once in a while, you're trying to do something and you run up against them, uh, and you want a little bit more freedom. I'm not going to get into the more code-based hacks of the engine uh, this time, but I'm going give to you, give you some pointers. Uh, what I want to talk about today is just a couple of things that you can do um, without modifying the, the JavaScript that runs the game, uh, but just by playing around in the editor with the game data. So uh, here I've got this, this little sample game. Um, it has two rooms. I'm going to go full screen. Uh, it has this main room that you start with, with your avatar and a little character to interact with, a sprite, um, and then some tiles for a wall. And it has one exit to the next room, uh, and here's the next room which just has uh, an exit back to the first room, uh, the entrance where you start, and a few little, like kind of a path through the desert kind of a thing, and then maybe some barrels or whatever we've got up here. Um, so I said before that uh, I'm going to bring up, get rid of the paint, um, that you have a palette for each room of just three colors, right? Uh, however, if you look at the next room, um, so the the Sprite is one character, uh, or one color. You've got the background, tiles, like these walls, and then the colors of the sprites. Uh, if I go to the second room, um, you'll see that I, I've, I've got the same, uh, oh, this uses the, the other palette. Um, I've got the yellow background, I've got the brown tile, and I have this pink sprite, which is what the avatar is gonna be colored. Uh, but you see the little path through the desert is blue. Uh, that's a fourth color. And normally you can't do that with the engine because it's only got three in the palette. But uh, so these, these tabs across the top here are all different things that you can do with the, with the editor, with the engine. And one of them is called game data. And game data gives you access to like the, uh, the representation that it has internally for the game. Uh, like it has the name of the game up at the top. This is, this is like um, its own format, its own text that, that it's developed just for keeping track of how a game is built. Um, you can see the room, it's all like like zeros and A's and, and things to keep track of uh, which sprites should be in what places in the grid, um, where the exits are going to be, what palette the room uses, PAL1. Uh, and the same thing for the tiles. Uh, you can kind of see this has like a round shape to it if you kind of blur your eyes and look at the zeros. Uh, you can kind of see this one's got a little er and a little er er, and that's these, these little tiles, these little grass tiles or footstep tiles. Um, so for your palette, you've got these palettes uh, listed up here at the top. Um, as you add palettes, they'll all show up, PAL0, PAL1, PAL2, with their names and everything. Uh, and you'll notice the first one here has four lines to it. These are uh, RGB values, red, green, blue. Um, so that first color, 218, 235, 96, is this yellow. Um, the 73, 79, 37 is this brown. And the 239, lots of red, uh, 6183 is the sprite, the pink. And I have just added another line here, a fourth line, and made it a blue color. 
Now, to get a sprite to be that color, you have to go down into the listing of tiles and sprites here, find the one that you want to be a different color, and you have to add this little COL3. That means it's going to go to the palette that you have for this, this room, and it's going to count 0, 1, 2, 3, and use the, the fourth, zero, the three, index 3 color. Uh, so doing this, you could keep pasting more and more colors. You could have a dozen colors in there, come down to your tile and say, uh, color 10, and that would be the um, 11th in the list of, of palette colors. So some people have used this for things like doing a uh, Pac-Man game, sort of, where you have different colored ghosts and pop and pickups and, and things like that. So that is the, the first hack I want to show you. I've got one more since this is a very short talk. Um, when you look at a sprite, so if I go to, uh, not find drawing, but drawing. Oh, where's my, I've lost it, paint. Okay. Uh, so these sprites can have multiple frames. Uh, so I've got this little cat thing here, right? Uh, which if we go back to the first room, it will show up. Uh, if you add a tile, add a, add a drawing to this, no, not sorry, not that. Um, where is it? Ah, animation. So you can have two frames of animation. The engine allows you two frames of animation. Uh, so if I go to frame two here and I draw the cat's tail vertically, you'll notice it starts to wag in the scene. It's just back and forth, A, B, A, B. Now, uh, again, if you look at the game data for this, um, so if I find that sprite, yeah, right here. Uh, so I'm gonna make this a little bigger so we can see it. Uh, I don't know if you can, if that reads at all, but this is the definition of the sprite. And you can see it's got two frames with a little greater than sign splitting them up. So as you might imagine, if you take one of these frames and you copy it, and you add your own greater than, and you paste it, now you have three frames of animation. So if I change this and I say, maybe I want the, uh, at this point I have to hand edit because I don't have the, the editor doesn't support multiple frames. It doesn't have a UI for showing me the other frames. Um, but if I go in here and I edit this and I say, I'm gonna put a one there and a zero there and a one there and a zero there. So now you'll notice uh, once I tab out of this, uh, you hit tab and it takes that game data and refreshes the engine uh, just once you lose focus. Now you notice the, the cat wags its tail, holds it, and then its ears move. So you've got these three frames of animation. People have made like really lengthy, um, after this was discovered, uh, really lengthy animations for single tiles just by doing this, by updating these, these little things. So those are things that you can do without any code modifications. That's just playing around with the data that makes the game. Uh, and there are, there are tools to help you do this. Um, there's a frequently asked questions uh, that somebody's put together. It's this document that's all like, how do I uh, have multiple frames of animation? Or how do I have multiple colors? This is the information about the color stuff. Um, so I'll give you a link to that. There's also this GitHub repo that's full of bitsy hacks. These are code hacks, but they're as easy as um, copying the code out that's in there and pasting it in the bottom of the HTML that you save your game out to. Uh, and if that seems challenging, there's a tool called Vorksy where uh, this lets you paste in your game data, uh, which I was saying from that window before. And then uh, it has the list of hacks from that GitHub repo that you can just pick. Um, which I can't right now because I don't have the, um, I haven't pasted game data. But you can just pick it and it will emit a new HTML file for you that already has the hacks built in. There's lots of cool hacks. There's stuff for like exiting to a different room from dialogue or adding text effects. Um, lots of cool things you can do with the engine once you start extending it. Uh, so that is what I have. Those are some links for you. If you want to, if you're interested, you can take a photo and um, use those links later. That's the Bitsy engine itself, the editor, uh, the hacking fact that I talked about, the Borksy and uh, the GitHub repo with hacks. And uh, have fun. It's super easy to get into. It feels like doodling to me, um, making games with Bitsy. Cheers. Sure.